The ancient city of Pompeii has been of immense interest to scientists, historians and anthropologists around the world. As a result of a volcanic eruption in 79 AD, this town of ancient Italy was found buried in up to 6 meters of volcanic ash. Since most of the inhabitants were killed almost instantaneously, the town provides scientists with a snapshot of what Roman life looked like. For the first time now, scientists have managed to obtain a full genome sequence of one of the individuals from Pompeii, revealing that the person was infected with tuberculosis. In this episode, I talk about how the genome of the individual was sequenced and what researchers found from the DNA. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Pompeii is one of the 54 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Italy. It was a Roman Imperial Age port city located south of Naples in central Italy until it was completely destroyed and buried by the ashes of a volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. A magistrate of ancient Rome documented that the Vesuvius' eruption uh, occurred around 1 pm on 24th of August and was visible from over 40 kilometers away. More than 2,000 individuals died as a direct consequence of the eruption, making it the deadliest ever in European history. The several exceptionally well-preserved buildings found in Pompeii, such as the House of the Surgeon, House of Fawn and House of Chast Lovers, suggest that Pompeii was probably a holiday resort for wealthy Romans. However, Pompeii was also an important city for trading and business with a population ranging between 6,400 and 20,000. Genetic studies from the human remains has been a challenge because exposure to high temperature destroys the bone matrix, thereby diminishing the quality and quantity of DNA that can be recovered from it. On the other hand, the materials that covered the remains would have shielded them from environmental factors like the atmospheric oxygen that decrades DNA. Initial analysis of genomes from the remains of humans at Pompeii were limited to short stretches of mitochondrial DNA, which contains genes inherited from the maternal side. For this particular study, the team used a high-throughput shotgun sequencing, DNA capture, and enrichment strategy. Shotgun sequencing is a technique that involves randomly breaking up the genome into small DNA fragments that are sequenced individually. A computer program then looks for overlaps in the DNA sequences, using them to reassemble the fragments in their correct order to reconstitute the genome. Instead of mitochondrial DNA, the team looked for optimal sources of ancient DNA from teeth and petrous bone which are found at the base of the skull. Modern DNA collection and sequencing methods dramatically increased the amount of data that can be obtained from previously unsuitable samples. The successful recovery of DNA from one individual helped the team to reconstruct its genetic history and even investigate the presence of blood-borne pathogens. The data also reveals the genetic diversity outside of Rome during the Roman Empire. The team analyzed the two human remains from the Casa del Fabro or the house of the craftsman from Pompeii. Both the individuals, one man and one woman, were casually leaning on a low relief in a corner of what probably was the dining room on the remnants of a triclinium, which were a sort of couch used in Roman buildings during meals. Their position shows that they died instantaneously due to high temperature volcanic ash cloud. More than half of the individuals found in Pompeii died inside their houses, indicating a collective unawareness of the possibility of a volcanic eruption or that the risk was downplayed because land tremors were common in the region. The first individual was a male between 35 and 40 years old and stood 164 cm tall. The female was over 50 years of age who stood 153 cm tall. The team extracted and sequenced DNA from a petrous bone from each Pompeian individual, but only the complete sequence of the man could be obtained. 
The team compared the male's individual DNA with that obtained from 1,030 other ancient and 471 modern Western Eurasian individuals, suggesting that his DNA shared the most similarities with modern Central Italians and other individuals who lived in Italy during the Roman Imperial Age. The male individual's mitochondrial DNA also identified groups of genes that are commonly found in those from the island of Sardinia, but not among other individuals who lived in Italy during the Roman Imperial Age. This suggests that there may have been high levels of genetic diversity across the Italian peninsula during that time. Another interesting insight that the team found was that lesions in one of the vertebrae had DNA sequences that are commonly found in mycobacterium, the group of bacteria that the tuberculosis causing bacteria belongs to. This suggests that the individual may have been affected by tuberculosis prior to his death. It is already known that tuberculosis was endemic in the Roman imperial period thanks to writings and ancient descriptions from ancient writers. The increased population density that characterized the beginning of the Roman era probably due to the development of an urban Roman way of life favored the spread of tuberculosis across Italy. Although the study was limited to a single individual, it confirms and demonstrates the possibility of applying paleogenomic methods to study human remains from this unique site. The study also paves the way for further genetic analysis of other well-preserved Pompeian individuals, which could help reconstruct the lifestyle of this fascinating population of imperial Roman period. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to the print. You can do so through the link in the description box below. <music>